Hi guys and ladies, Ramsey here. Welcome to another video. Today we have a This Year in Perfume and we've got an unboxing, a dual video. Uh, and the year that we are now on, if you've been following my channel, you know we um, have been slowly moving to the present, going through year by year, talking about some of the different perfumes from my collection. I just thought it would be an interesting way to, you know, talk about a bunch of different perfumes in a specific time frame. So you can kind of get an idea of the way that they've progressed. I've made a playlist and I've, I'm putting all the this year in perfumes that I've done in the playlist. Now, I did start somewhere around the 1970s getting serious about doing one year after the next. Uh, so technically I could always go back in time and knock out some of the older, maybe decades, um, you know, and include some of the stuff like Shalimar, Val de Nui, Mitsuko that isn't included in these lists because they're so old. Uh, but this is going to focus on the year 2003. And 2003 for me personally was a very memorable year because it was the year that I graduated from high school. Uh, and I, you know, there was a lot of change going on in, in my life at the time. Uh, and you know, when, when you're young, you're excited about everything. Uh, but, um, I do remember in 2003, the biggest event. So there's a bunch of obviously events. You can go to Wikipedia, type in 2003. They'll talk about all kinds of stuff like the space shuttle, uh, disintegrating, uh, during re-entry, uh, in February. They'll talk about all these different events and those are all very important, but there was one event that just sticks out in my mind for whatever reason, and it was the beginning of the Iraq War, that shock and awe period. If you lived back then, you know it was all over the news. They broadcast it live so you could watch it. And I remember being a kid, just sitting there thinking, wow, you know, those bombs that are falling are potentially killing real people that are on the ground. And it just really it really hit me. I remember being very against that action. Uh, but, you know, you talk to people and they figured that, well, you know, Colin Powell was standing behind it. There must be some truth to it. And then, of course, we realized later on that uh, there actually was not as much truth to the weapons of mass destruction claim that uh, they thought. I remember being adamantly against it at the time. Um, but, you know, when you're a kid, or most college kids are, uh, I would say against that military action, no matter what, sometimes it's necessary. Uh, as you get older, you know, you, you realize those things. But um, that is probably one of the moments from 2003 that I remember the most, other than graduating, of course, from, from high school and moving into college. And you start, you know, getting, uh, I was doing a lot of reading back then. Yet, you, you know, you realize um, before you have a kid and a family and all that stuff, you realize how much time you had. And so I would, I would study and I would read books and I would play, you know, whatever you did back then, play video games or go play basketball or all kind of stuff. Uh, so it was an interesting year for me. Of course, I knew none of, uh, none about, about any of these perfumes. Uh, but before we get into the perfumes from my collection in the year 2003, we're going to do scent of the day. Scent of the day today is a doozy. It made my top 100 which if you haven't watched that video, that's a great way to gather information on fragrances that I really like personally. Those are just my personal taste. They're not the top 100 fragrances I think are the best of all time technically, but they're just my top 100 fragrances. And I did a spray a couple hours ago, so I won't spray it again, but my scent of the day is one of my favorite Italian fragrances. It's Francesco Smalto. Pour Om. So this is Smalto Pour Om, basically. Look at the bottle. So there's also a um, Malto Smalto, which I also have, but it's a different bottle than this. This is my favorite from the house, and this is actually one of my favorite Fougere fragrances ever. Um, it made my top 100, like I said. It has this very sharp anise with bergamot, lavender, very gentlemanly, but sharp and bracing. And there's, so the note breakdown is anise, bergamot, tarragon, lavender, neroli, and rosemary in the top with cyclamen, 
There's a fern note, which we all know fern has no smell. That's the whole point of a fougere, is to create a fragrance that would smell like a fern if a fern had a smell. They don't have a smell. But there is a fern note in the heart notes of this, which I always found strange, since it has no smell. Uh, there's carnation, geranium, patchouli, and cedar in the heart, and then the base is amber, oak moss, leather, musk, and tonka. And what's so beautiful about this is you almost get this smoky-like quality. Like I mentioned on one of my other videos, we were talking about um, some of the ingredients that Russian Adam was kind enough to send to me. And one of them was smoked patchouli. And I said it smelled like the that smoky bit you get from like smoked cheese. Uh, I've ever had like smoked Gouda or something like that. That smoked quality that gets into the cheese. You get a little bit of that smoked quality here for whatever reason. I don't know where exactly it's coming from. Uh, but you get this smoky leather with anise. Like, imagine you took a fougere layer, right? And one part of that, of the many layers in the fougere, was this smoked leather quality in the base. But the top has that bracing, sharp anise, uh, you know, blast when you first spray. And it mixes with some of the... Um, the florals in the mid, the patchouli, the Italian, very Italian fragrance. That's the best way to describe it. Very Italian. Smalto Porom is just a joy to wear. And um, this is actually the only bottle that I have. I'm just glad to have a bottle. Uh, I can't remember where I got this. I might have got this from Le Parfumé a couple years ago. Um, Le Parfumé in Canada, but I can't exactly remember where I got this. I could have got this from Anouge at Enchante or Le Parfumé. One of those two I think I got it from, but I'm just so happy to have a bottle. Bottles are starting to really dry up, so if you're into fougeres, if fougeres are your thing, and I have another fougere coming in 2003, that's a masterpiece, but this is, um, this is a must sniff. It's at least a must sniff, whether you want to Pony up and grab a bottle or not is up to you, but I would urge you to get your nose on this bad boy if you're a fougere lover. Okay, so let's talk about some of the perfumes from 2003. First, I want to talk about some decants that were sent to me by a couple of my subscribers. Uh, Rachel was kind enough to send me this, which I will do a first impression on. This is uh, Maurice Roussel's interpretation of L'Instant de Guerlain in 2003, the Eau de Parfum. And I haven't given this a full wear yet, but I will. I will wear this. Um, this is targeted towards women, but it seems like it's completely unisex. I love L'Instant de Guerlain Eau Extreme Pour Homme for men. Uh, and so I'm very excited to get to try this. This has some beautiful notes like that I love, like iris. Uh, there's a honey note in here. I absolutely love honey and perfume. Bergamot, mandarin orange in the top with this iris, jasmine, magnolia, Common Elder and Ylang Ylang in the heart. And then the base is uh, Amber, Benzoin, Honey, Musk, and Vanilla. It smells amazing. Can't wait. I'm going to do a earlier first impression video on this very, very soon. And then the other couple decants. Um, I believe it was Kevin that sent me this. This is uh, Frederick Mall's L'Eau d'Hiver. I threw all my decants together, so I can't remember exactly what came from where. I, I apologize. Um, Lo de Ver is a Jean-Claude Elena creation, and I've been really getting into his work lately. Um, I have a bottle of his old work on the way, and I'll do an unboxing when it gets here. Um, but this is basically in the Jean-Claude Elena style with this... Light powdery floralness, the hawthorn, so there's a hawthorn note in this that reminds me a little bit of the way he used the florals in Queer d'Ange, which I absolutely love. This just missed out on my top 100. I really feel like with more wares, Queer d'Ange would break into that top 100. I just couldn't, I couldn't take out Francesco Smalto and put in Queer d'Ange, but I, I almost did, but I just couldn't do it. 
because I just love Francesco Smalto Porom so much. Uh, but that was the debate that was going on in my head. Queer Ange just missed out on the top 100. But Lodi Vera has this Hawthorne heliotrope powderiness with the iris and jasmine that will remind you a little bit of the way because this is a very floral leather fragrance. And so it feels like he was playing with this Hawthorne Accord and went one way with Lodi Vera and another way with Queer d'Ange. Um, I have not given this a full wear yet though, but I will and I will do a first impression or early impression uh, on, on Lodi Vera very soon. There's also a beautiful carnation. I love old school carnation. And this is right to the end of when carnation was pretty much dying down as a, as a note used in perfumery commonly. It used to be in all men's, a lot all, but lots of men's perfumery, you know, 25, 35 years ago. Now, you almost never see it. I would love carnation to make a comeback. There's musk, honey, bergamot angelica i love the angelica i love angelica and fragrances very rarely is there ever a fragrance that uses that angelica note that i don't like so uh very excited to get to try lodivera uh and i like i said i've been really digging dipping into jean claude elena's work uh and here's something that i learned from a live stream that i watched from uh derek the scented devil and he basically said that uh, Edmund Rudnitska had only two pupils, one of which was Pierre Bourdon. He was like the main one that got the real training in person. And then there was Jean-Claude Elena, who, who Edmund Rudnitska also trained, but he didn't get the time and energy that Pierre Bourdon got. He kind of was on the side, if you will. So he took everything that Pierre Bourdon gave him to heart and he really cherished all of that information whereas Pierre Bourdon kind of took that and, and created his own style almost immediately. Jean-Claude Elena did a lot of homages to uh, Edmund Rudnitska's work and of course as we all know Edmund Rudnitska uh, did Eau de Hermes, right? And then Jean-Claude Elena made Cartier's declaration which was like a homage, uh, you know, salute to uh, Oda Hermes. And then, of course, Hermes looked at that and said, damn, this guy just made a Hermes fragrance for Cartier. Let's get him on board as in-house perfumer. And then he took that, you know, Oda Hermes DNA and ran with it and created a lot of his own creations for the house of, of Hermes. So um, that's a, that's a long-winded way of saying that I'm really... I'm really starting to notice the intricacies in Jean-Claude Elena's work. And I do really love that he um, took his training from the great Edmund Runitska so to heart. And that, um, you know, his, his perfumes take a little bit of time to get to know. And that's the problem. That is one downfall I will say with having a big collection is I wear a different fragrance every day. It's just something that I have done for a long, long time. I don't wear the same fragrance over and over again. Jean-Claude Elena's creations, I feel, are one of the few perfumers who I really feel like I need to spend a week or two with the fragrance nonstop to get to, to, get to really know it. And I don't always do that when you have a big collection. You wear something, you study it, and then you move on to something else, then you move on to something else. And, you know, it, so it's taking me a long time to circle back to his old creations, Queer d'Ange, um, Equipage Geranium, Bellamy, Vetiver, you know, stuff like that, stuff that he's made over the years that, um, Cartier's Declaration, that you have to kind of study and really spend time with and get to know. And so as the where cycles of my collection have kind of come full circle and I've worn his stuff over and over again. At first, when I first smelled his stuff, I thought, eh, I'm not a fan. He's too transparent for me. I like the heavier stuff. I like the amouages, as you can see. And, um, you know, I like, I like that heavier blend. But then I'm now I'm starting to really appreciate uh, the nuances. You know, it's like an author like Stephen King. I mentioned Stephen King's books before. Sometimes Stephen King will put a um, a character in a book 
that was also in another book, and you don't know about the connection unless you've read that other book. Jean-Claude Elena's creations seem that way to me sometimes now, where you're starting to, I'm starting to make connections to fragrances that he has done or that great perfumers of the past have done that I didn't get the first time or the second time or the third time around, you know what I mean? So it's starting to come, it's starting to, I'm starting to see kind of the genius and the little details that you would miss unless you really paid close attention to his work. It would just slide right by you. So i um, very excited to really give Lodi Vera. This is enough for two, three wares and full wares. And so I'm very excited to uh, get to know that perfume. Next on the list, we have the final decant. And that is, this one came from Rich Mitch. I have not given this a full wear yet either. I wanted to wait until it's more weather specific. You know, I wanted it to be cold again because this is a tobacco fragrance, a sweet oriental smoky tobacco called Fumeri Turk. Now, this is a Serge Luton's that I would love a full bottle of. Even though it's sweet, tobacco fragrances that are sweet, I can deal with. It's one of the few fragrances that have sweetness that I actually enjoy. Uh, like I own fragrances like Herod and stuff like that. You can't see it, but I do own Herod. Um, and I own Aramis Tobacco Reserve, which has a little bit of sweetness to it, not too much. Um, but this is beeswax. You're already on the right path for me. Beeswax and tobacco with resins, jasmine, this candied like rose, leather, tonka, styrax, peru balsam, patchouli, juniper, and white honey. Beeswax and white honey and tobacco. I mean, I would love a full bottle of this, but I am boycotting Serge Luton's new bottles. I don't want the sealed uh, grats, grats or whatever they call it. I don't want that bottle. I want the old bottle, and they are going for an arm and a leg, and I just refuse to pay it. So um, that's an unfortunate, you know, side effect of trying to collect vintage fragrances sometimes. Okay, next we're going to do an Azaro, and... These next two are basically on my cheapy list. So I did make a cheapy list. I made a video of this is not a top 10 cheap fragrances that I would recommend. I'm starting to get comments asking me, hey, what are good cheap fragrances to start a collection with? I would start with something like this. Uh, I don't have my microfiber cloth here, so I'll just use my shirt. Uh, this is Azaro's Visit. Azaro's Visit. And the reason that I would start here is this is made by someone that I would consider a master perfumer. I don't know if she is a master perfumer. Uh, and the bad news is I believe this is discontinued, unfortunately. Um, Parfumo says it was last marketed by Clarins, which usually when they say it was last marketed by, that means it's done. Uh, it's not it's not in production anymore. I think you can still find bottles of this floating around. I bought this because of one man who has heavily influenced my collection of vintages, and that's Chris from Scentland. Now, this isn't really a true vintage. Next year, it'll be 20 years old. Came out in 2003. Anique Minardo was big in the 90s and early 2000s. And this is one of her creations that flies under the radar. You know, a lot of people talk about uh, Boucheron's Jaipur Alm, and I've talked a lot about D Squared Potion, and but very few people talk about Visit. Chris from Scentland talked about Visit, and this fragrance right here is actually the reason why I never tried to hunt down an old bottle of Gucci Rush for men because of this, because of Visit. And uh, it has this cardamom, nutmeg, pink pepper, this woody, spicy thing going on in the opening. But then there's a note of frankincense. There's an ambergris note, obviously synthetic, for a $25 fragrance or whatever it's going for nowadays. You're not going to get real ambergris in an Azaro, but you get that profile. You get that ambergris po profile with musk, blue Lebanon cedar, very specific type of cedar, with guyac wood. 
And guyacoid can sometimes come across as a little bit smoky in and of itself. So you get the spiciness from cardamom, nutmeg, and pink pepper, this trio at the top. But there's a beautiful, and it's not listed here, but I get a lovely sandalwood note in this. Um, whether that's just a trick of the whether it's a trick of the frankincense and guyac wood or, or whether there is a sandalwood note that's not listed. But either way, uh, that this is a solid fragrance for a cheapie. You can do way worse than a Zaro visit. Okay, next is another cheapie. Again, no one talks about. This is an Alberto Morias. Again, um, 2003. These are all 2003, of course. So next year, it'll be 20 years old. And uh, this is this is the only fragrance from the house that I own, uh, Mabussin Om. So Mabussin Om, and they 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 put two stickers on mine. How about that? A double up. Uh, this is an Alberto Mordias. If you like fragrances like Ascada's Casual Friday, which is discontinued, someone was just asking me, hey. What are some replacements for Casual Friday? There's Jean-Paul Gaultier's Le Mal, and there's Mabus and Om, in my opinion. These two. And I'm going to try to find a small bottle of Le Mal, you know, just to have reference, because I don't have it. Because I already had these, I figured I don't need it, but I might as well, just for reference. You know, I'm not the biggest Le Mal fan, um, because I prefer Casual Friday. But this is a good option as well. If you if you were also a fan of Casual Friday, this has that lavender, patchouli, vanilla thing going on with some sandalwood and musk and cinnamon and rosemary and sage and, you know, some stuff like that. But it's very pleasant, a pleasant designer. This is one of the ones that if I wear this, which I rarely ever do, but uh, if I wear this, the wife says... Oh wow, that smells really that smells really pleasant. You know, she likes that easy. She likes that easy to wear stuff. I wear some of the crazy amouages sometimes, you know, she's like it's too much for her. So if if you're the kind of person that wants a good starter and I think you can get these on discount for 20 bucks. Mabus and Ohm, which they're a jewelry house by the way. Uh so the bottle actually is kind of cool, but I hate the cap because the cap it is really a hassle to take it on and off. Cool, cool looking bottle though. I do like the fact that they put some effort into the bottle design. All right, now we're moving on to a discontinued fragrance. And the discontinued fragrance we're going to be looking at is a Versace. And this is called Versace Man from 2003. I've shown this fragrance on my channel many a times before. This is this spicy oriental fragrance. There's the notes. I'll read them to you. It's basically a top of neroli, bergamot from Calabria, angelica flowers, and black pepper with saffron and cardamom, and then a, a, a base of amber living tobacco leaves, labdanum cysts, and cashmere woods with a K which I'm guessing is cashmeran, and it does smell like it has this synthetic um, undercurrent. Now, one thing that's not listed here... Oh, no, it is. Okay, so uh, Parfumo shows tobacco. Uh, the bottle says living tobacco leaves, but you do get this tobacco, saffron, um, peppery vibe, and it, and it is a... This also used to be a cheapie. Used to be able to get this fragrance for 25, 35 bucks, 40 bucks. Now it's going for hundreds on eBay. Um, so I would urge you not to pay hundreds for this. This is not a fragrance that's worth, you know, there are some vintages that are worth paying the money and there's some that are not worth it. This is one that is just a well-made designer. You know, if you got this for 50 bucks or less, you're you're thanking your lucky stars. You got a hell of a fragrance. If you paid $150 for this, you might get this in and go, it's good. And it's one of my um it's it's one of the Versace fragrances I really enjoy. Versus Womo is my favorite, actually, but that's from uh, a decade before this. The perfumer is Domitile. 
Michelon Bertier. I don't know any of uh, any of the work that uh, Dom Domatil has done. Oh, okay, so Domatil worked with Olivier Polge on Midnight in Paris. So I do know at least one other thing that that Domatil has done. Um, but this is a fragrance that for a designer, see, this is what's sad about it is this what is designer fragrances used to be and to see what designers are today. This blows modern designers out of the water. I will tell you that it's a shame they discontinued this and they kept the O fresh, the Versace man O fresh in the light blue bottle. They should have kept this one in my opinion, but, um, you know, it is what it is, 2003. Next, we're gonna go to a Rochas, and this is a Michelle Almarac creation, and this is a fantastic fragrance. This is getting very hard to find, by the way. I'm glad that I have a 100 mil bottle. I don't have a cap because it's a tester, but this is Rochas Louis. Now, Louis is a woody spicy fragrance with this has one of my favorite narrowly notes in perfumery for whatever reason the narrowly in this when you first spray it's absolutely stunning beautiful summertime spring and summer fragrance so even though the juice looks dark this is a spring summer scent and if you like fragrances like if you like fragrances like Dunhill's Icon this is another beautiful narrowly, narrowly fragrance. Rochas Louis is like the grandfather to Dunhill's icon, if that makes sense. Uh, it has this narrowly and lemon opening. There's a sycamore and cedar wood combo in the heart. So you get this very strange wood because sycamore wood is not used very often with a sweet grass note and then the base of amber, patchouli, and vanilla. So it's a citrus fragrance with that lemon and narrowly combo. It's so pleasant and it's so well done. And it's a and it's a, a spring summer fragrance with some depth to it. You know, it's something that you can put on and you don't have to apply every couple hours kind of thing because of the amber, patchouli, vanilla, but it works perfect in the heat. I love narrowly when it gets warm. And Rochas Louis, it's a crazy bottle too because it 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 rocks. So I don't have a cap because, like I said, mine is a tester. I think I got this from Moudasir. You can find him on Base Notes, and I should have another haul from him coming in the next month or so. So that is Rochas Louis. Next is one of the Hall of Fame fragrances. If you're a lover of fougeres. I mentioned Smalto Porum, which is one Hall of Fame Fougere. This is Hall of Fame Fougere number two on this video. This is YSL's Rive Gauche Porum in the tin can. Now, they re-released this in the men's collection or whatever they called it in the square bottle uh, that looks like this. Looks like this, and it says YSL's Rive Gauche right here. Um, I've never smelled that one, but people say they didn't do the best job reformulating it. So if you can get the tin can, I can speak to this one. I just have never smelled. This one may be fine in the bottle. And since they're both discontinued now, if you're a fan of Reeve Gosh Pour Homme, I guess it could be just get whatever you can find. But this is the preferred one in the, in the shaving foam uh, bottle. Love the presentation. Love the idea. It's a Jacques Cavalier creation, so you know he knows what he's doing. This is bergamot, rosemary, and star anise. Now, Jacques Cavalier used star anise successfully in this fragrance as well, and that's opium pour homme for men. So opium pour homme has a beautiful star anise note. Yeah, Lovely star anise, uh, and he did it again with Reeve Gosh. Um, but he used geranium, it's a, it's a fougere, so you're gonna have the uh, geranium in the mid, lavender, you're gonna have lavender, geranium, and kumarin, uh, which is the 
synthetic Tonka replacement, I guess, that they use or a derivative of Tonka. Which I actually, um, one of the ingredients that um, Russian Adam sent to me was Tonka. And it was the one I just randomly decided to try. I dipped this about three days ago. And look at that. You can still see the stain on the blotter. And it still smells like I just dipped it. It's unbelievable, the, the actual ingredients, how much they last. So the, this Tonka just smells like I just dipped it. He gave me a little Arige Ladore blotters. And so I've been sitting here sniffing this as the days have gone on. Absolutely amazing. Um, but there's Kumarin in the base, Gayak wood, patchouli, and vetiver. And this is basically... Um, if you're, if you're a fougere lover, these two you should put on your to sniff list for sure. They're both discontinued, but you can still find bottles around. So I would highly recommend these two to a fougere lover. If you want to smell clean, fresh shaving foam, you know, that kind of stuff. Reef gosh, pour home. All right, so we're going to go to from uh, one uh, Tom Ford to a to a to uh to another for his time at Gucci and this is Gucci Porom 1 the original and uh Gucci Porom 1 is another one of those you know mythical long lost discontinued fragrance that uh vintage lovers just go on and on about and there is something special to this if you can't find um if you can't find gucci porn one this is supposedly the same perfumer same um you know same uh ingredient well maybe not the same ingredients but it's supposed to be the same fragrance uh, but it feels like maybe Bentley used some cheaper ingredients, which makes sense. I think the ingredients in the Gucci are higher class, and I think this smells better, and I prefer this. But once this is gone, will I go hunt down another bottle and pay hundreds? No. I'll just I'll just do the old Bentley for men absolute. Um, but I absolutely love this fragrance. It's another Michel Almarac. He was another huge nose turn of the 2000s. Still is, but this fragrance has something special because the, the way that the papyrus, the main notes are papyrus, cedar, and incense, frankincense, and the cedar note in this is bar none. This is one of the best cedar fragrances out there, but it's that, that wisp of frankincense. You get cedar, but it's like someone is, you know, when you're a Boy Scout and they give you those sticks and they start showing you how to try to make a fire and you're doing this kind of thing and you're starting and you get a little bit of smoke, but you can never make a fire. Um, that's what it reminds me of. It reminds me of someone starting, starting the fire on a cedar plank, but the smoke that arises is not smoke from the wood. It's frankincense smoke. It's incense smoke that you're getting. There's also lavender in this. There's tarragon. There's ginger, which um, Gucci used a ginger note in the opening in Gucci Rush for men. Or I'm sorry, Gucci Envy for men. There's a beautiful ginger note here, but it's much heavier in Gucci Envy. Here, it's just there to kind of add a little bit of depth. It's so good. In the cold, I absolutely love this. I mean, you're a you're a boss wearing Gucci Pour Homme 1 in the cold. Um, okay, finally, the final fragrance of 2003, and it is one of my favorites, and it's one of my most used amouages, mostly because I'm in Texas, and I have the most chance to wear this fragrance nine months out of the year. This is a warm weather amouage. There's very few warm weather amouages. Most of them are cold weather. But I wear them anyways. But um, this is Amouage Seal Man. C-I-E-L. C-L. Man. This is a vintage bottle. 
Uh, they're all vintage because they're discontinued. This is discontinued now. But it was last marketed by Sabco Group and Oman Perfumery. This is only when it was Oman Perfumery before Sabco came in. So you can see how much I have left. Almost exactly the halfway mark. Maybe a little over halfway gone. And this is another one that I absolutely love, but I don't think I'll get another bottle. Just because it's not the experiences and the love that I have for this fragrance uh, was just that point in time for me. I don't think I would go spend big money on a vintage once this is gone. It's uh, Bergamot, Lavender, Lily of the Valley. It is Muguet month. It's May. So... Uh, there you go, there's a Lily of the Valley note in Seattle Man with a beautiful rose and jasmine. There's cardamom, nutmeg, peach. That peach note is so unique. You don't get very many peach notes like that in masculine perfumery with cinnamon. And then the base is patchouli, sandalwood, vetiver, frankincense, and cedar. And the frankincense-cedar combo strikes again. But here, the lavender is turned up, and it feels like, you know, the marketing material on this says it's supposed to feel like a, like a spring thunderstorm, you know, like a thunderstorm rolls in on a sunny day kind of thing, and it's sunny, but it's raining, you know, those kind of days, and then it's gone in 30 minutes. And it really does have that. That, that silver frankincense will remind you of the rain coming down. It's beautiful on a spring summer day. And it's so unique. No one's going to smell like this. Absolutely. You, you'll smell completely different from everyone else you meet. Unless you happen to meet, you know, unless you happen to meet the one other person like me or probably you out there uh, that's going to be wearing CL Man instead of Eros or Savage or whatever else they're wearing nowadays. So that's the final one. My One of my favorite warm weather amouages. I will be very sad to, uh, I'll be very sad when this bottle's gone. But I still got a lot of wear. I've had this for probably five or six years now. And uh, so if it lasts me another five or six, it'll be a blessing. CL Man by Amouage. Beautiful. All right, so now we're going to do the surprise unboxing. And I do have my handy dandy unboxing knife right here. And so here's what we have. Um, Ta-da! So we have three fragrances, and this is another example of why I like to sometimes buy in bulk, because at retail, each one of these fragrances is like $200, I think. I don't know the retail price, actually. Why don't, why don't I look it up real quick? Um... Let's see if I can find the retail price real quick. Well, um, Lucky Scent has them for, actually, I don't know what retail is. I'm gonna have to do some. I'm gonna have to do some digging. I think it's something like 125 to 175 bucks a bottle. But I got a little. I got a discount. And if you're interested, here's the person that I bought it from. And I've used him many a times, and he is solid. He's one of the people that I could recommend. So we have three fragrances, all from Parfums de Empire. We've got Tabac Tabau. Tabac, tab, tabac Taboo, sorry, Queer Ottoman, which is the one I'm most excited about because this is Leather and Iris, my favorite combination. And then we've got Ombre Russe. And so let's open these. Let's see what it's like. This one actually says Production Confidential 2017. These don't have, I guess maybe these are the newer presentations. Let's see what it's like. Let's open these, shall we? Let's do a quick unboxing. Ombre Russe first. 
Ah, there you go, Amber Roos. And I basically got this because of you guys. Um, people kept asking me, have you smelled Parfum de Empire? No, I haven't. So I just, I got a package deal. I got a hell of a deal. And uh, so I figured, what the heck, let's, let's grab all three. There's still one more I want. Um, I think it's called Musk Tonkin. But I'll, I'll find that one later, some, somewhere, somehow. Let's look up Ombre Roos. Okay, Ombre Roos, 2005 release. Spicy, leathery. It opens with champagne and vodka. Wow. Uh, ambergris, coriander, cumin, tea, cinnamon, leather, vanilla, frankincense. That is an insane note breakdown. Let's open up Queer Ottoman, which is the one I'm most excited about. I'm hoping it smells like Roja's Great Britain. But probably not. It'll have its own twist to it. I'm very excited about this. Oh, yeah. There you are. Queer Ottoman. Beautiful name, too. So, Queer Ottoman... Two of my favorite notes in perfumery, iris and leather. And this is a 2006 release. Iris, jasmine, and labdanum in the top. Labdanum in the top. Benzoin, leather, and tolu balsam in the heart. Tonka, vanilla, and frankincense in the base. Mark Antoine Corticciato is the perfumer. I wonder if he's done all of these. He has. He did Amber Roos. He did Tabak Taboo. He did Fougere Bengal. I guess he did them all. Um, all right, let's try Tabak Taboo. Okay, there, there she is. Tabak Taboo. It smells a little bit animalic. Interesting. Um, I won't do first impressions on these today because I'll wear them and talk about them. But um, there you have it. There's my quick unboxing. Uh, and this year in perfume 2003 i hope you guys have enjoyed the video let me know if you have experience with uh parfum d'ampere and um let me know what some of your favorite fragrances from 2003 are i love seeing your faces in the comments thank you very much to everyone who has liked subscribed you know comments participates i love the interaction i love chatting with you guys i learned so much i mean these are basically uh, these these right here are specifically because of recommendations. People kept telling me, you have to try this house. So instead of just paying for samples, I just I blind I blind bought them. But don't do as I do. Um, do not blind buy. I don't recommend blind buy. Do as I say, not as I do. But uh, I'm very very excited to try these three. So, um, anyways, thanks for watching and and thanks for commenting so you know a subscription is always appreciated because it does help me i think it helps with the um youtube algorithm it helps with my um you know it helps with my uh, availability what videos pop up next i'm starting to see some comments from people that are new and that's always nice so thanks again for watching everyone cheers and i'll see you again tomorrow with another video bye guys